My name is Tom Maloney and for my sins I'm the Managing Director of Construction Information Services and for those of you who are aware of what CIS do, we track and monitor all construction activity across Ireland, north and south. We do this in a unique way by tracking all uh, projects from applications through to tender and on site. Our advanced and depth construction information provides contractors, subcontractors and product suppliers with a huge range of construction opportunities opportunities right across all sectors. Now, I've been asked here today to give you an insight into the key sustainable uh, construction projects ranging from water to wind, solar, bioenergy, recycling plants, through to data centres, which are currently in our online system. And also comment on the valuable um, role that building information technology, or modelling should I say, uh, and lean construction practices have on the future of maintaining and improving momentum in construction uh, output for all connected parties. Um, the range of construction projects I'm, I'm talking about provide you with a taste of how Ireland is working towards a sustainable future of renewable energy and, and construction processes. Currently in our system we have over 7.5 billion at various stages in the construction cycle from pre-planning right through to one site that meet the, the sustainable definition. A brief analysis of this is water uh, at 5.5 billion, data centres, sorry, at 1.3 billion, wind energy 500 million, solar bioenergy and recycling circa 200 million. Looking at these in more detail, the Irish Water Business Plan, which was issued in September, um, will bring approximately 5.5 billion, as I just mentioned, in capital investment on drinking water um, quality and capacity, wastewater quality and capacity, and new infrastructure right up to 2021. By way of update, what's currently happening is that there is a construction of nine drinking water treatment plants uh, nationwide and an upgrade of, four, of a further 18. And some samples of these would include two treatment water plants in Galway, Donegal, which are a plan submitted. There are plans approved for a further two in Cork and Sligo, and three water plants in Cork, Galway, and Tipperary, which are at tender stage. In addition to the key water, uh, wastewater uh, projects totaling 154 million, these include a 12.5 wastewater treatment plant in Yall, which is a, has contract awarded, and work is, in, is progressing well on 91 million Cork Lower Harbour main drainage project and wastewater treatment plant, and also a 24 million sewerage scheme for Liffey Valley. Turning to uh, renewable energy projects, to date there are eight major wind farms projects which are on site around the country in 2015 and the total value of these at this moment in time is 170 million. As the slide will indicate there, there are uh, quite a number that went on site in 2015 and there are another sever seven major projects planned uh, in, in the pipeline and uh, which are a plan submitted. Ireland's first ever solar wind farm project was approved in July and it is based in Cork and there are another similar projects uh, in the pipeline, mainly located in Cork but other, other locations identified are Tipperary, Kilkenny, Waterford and Wexford. On the bioenergy plan projects, we have three uh, that we can identify. Plans are drawn up to build a 25 million power plant for County Cork, generating electricity from waste food and other non-hazardous biodegradable products. And plans have been approved for two bioenergy plants, one a 4.2 million renewable bioenergy plant for Finglas and a 16.2 million uh, plant for Cork. Turning to thermal treatment plant, there is a 25 million uh, plant gone to tender for Tulla, uh, Tull, sorry, Tulla Moor in County Offaly and will have facilities to der derive energy and from waste and biomass materials. Now turning to data centres, which is the hot topic in, in Irish construction at the moment, the attraction of Ireland as a location 
for giants such as Facebook, Apple and Amazon include tax incentives, the cooler northern European temperatures which naturally lower machine cooling costs and, approximately, and our proximity to Europe. Ireland already has the highest number of data centres per capita for any European country and this is a set to expand as I will demonstrate shortly with some examples but recently Cork City Council with the support of the IDA and, and other organisations hosted a think tank event showcasing Cork's potential as a prime location for data storage and data centres. The results of a recent survey by Telecity Group found that the reasons for choosing Ireland as a data centre included corporation tax with 61% of respondents, climate 61%, proximity to Europe 52, ease of doing business 29 and workforce talent 28. But over 50% of the, the respondents indicated that their reason for choosing Ireland as a hub was influenced by the movement of these large giants uh, to set up here in Ireland. In a report published by the Transparency uh, Market Research on Green Data Centre, it stated that there's a strong growth predicted for the next eight years, which will, sorry, for the next seven years, which will be eight times over that of 2014. To demonstrate some of the uh, activity in the sector, we have plans approved just last week for a 70 million Microsoft data center in Clondalkin. Plans have also been recently approved by Import Planola for the 200 million Facebook data center in Clonee County Mead, which was two months ahead of the scheduled decision date. The 850 million Apple Center and Atten Rye in Galway is, has now, while it has been granted permission, has been appealed to Import Planola. Uh, Apple are hoping that the uh, decision to grant permission will be upheld, and this case is expected, and a uh, decision is expected in February 2016. <laughs> Amazon submitted plans in early October for a 100 million data centre uh, in Blanchestown and we are still awaiting a decision date from Fingal County Council. And finally, Google's 150 million data centre has been on site since July 2014 and completion is due in early 2016. So as you can see, an awful lot of activity is planned in the whole sustainable construction area. Turning now briefly to the second topic I've been asked to kindly comment on today, and that is how construction industry as a whole is starting to practice sustainable construction, advances in construction technology, and how these practices have been massively impact on the in industry efficiency and throughput to the adoption of BIM technology and lead constru uh, lean construction practices. Both have been and continue to be well documented and promoted by organisations such as the Construction Industry Federation, Mercury Engineering, PM Group, BAM and many more through the numerous presentations, case studies and information packs of recent months. In the UK, the government has mandated 2016 uh, for the introduction of BIM Level 2 procurement for all public service contracts. In Ireland, I suspect we'll adopt a wait and see to see how we, the, the progress is monitored in the UK. Now BIM and Lean Construction have a very good synergy fit. Indeed, BIM, BIM contributes directly to Lean Construction goals. BIM can effectively support Lean Construction through collaborative planning and first run studies. The main advantage of BIM software is that a building is designed faster, cheaper and better. This combination makes for a much more efficient building model from early design stage right through to building maintenance and beyond when it is fully occupied. The emergence of BIM into the Irish construction industry offers a cleaner, more efficient method of planning and construction collaboration, thus saving large amounts of money and reducing cost project duration. Because of the global environment uh, concerns, sustainable design has become the mainstream goal in recent years, and BIM is ideally suited to the delivery 
of information needed for the improved design and building performance. Success, successful implementation of BIM will allow the elimination of extra cost design and subsequent construction phases. BIM contributes to design and construction and commissioning of buildings with lower environmental impacts, whether this is in the form of energy saving, carbon reduction, or for the better use of fewer materials. It also enables planners and designers to put better components of buildings together and get a clear understanding of how that building can, can perform more efficiently, all of which leads to a positive, thank you, legacy in post-construction in terms of sustainability, efficiency and a greener environment. Finally, leading on to construction building information modeling. The aim of lean construction is to pra practice is to maximize and minimize waste. Lean construction philosophy is all about a solid plan in mind and how long it'll take, who's involved and managing a team to produce the best work in the shortest time they can. Thus ensuring building materials are economically sourced and waste control is carefully monitored. It is also based on the concept of lean manufacturing, a, con a concept that was first introduced by the Japanese car manufacturers to improve their output and cut down waste and improve profit margins. Waste in lean construction includes avoidable building errors, slow work pr pro uh, pr uh, progress, detailed star de uh, delayed starts, site overcrowding and poor site maintenance. It's, but it's not just about cutting costs, it's about increasing value by encouraging efficient team output and enthusiastic involvement in continuous construction involvement. The idea of first time right is essential to the lean philosophy. Right in this context means designing a straightforward plan and process so it, can go, so it can't go wrong. Lean construction has and is becoming the hot topic in the industry in recent years due to the phenomenal cost savings and deadline meetings, meeting achievements that, if it's done properly. For organizations such as CIS, who strive to provide customers with, with the highest quality intelligence, not just on construction activity, but on the scale of timing, the detail of projects, the use of BIM from a design concept through to completion will enable us to target our market in, our market, sorry, will help our market identify opportunities that best suits their business in terms of quality, capacity, pipeline management, etc. And finally, just to wrap up, I'd like to just say on a positive note from a construction point of view, CIS are currently putting together their annual uh, construction opportunities report for 2016. And to date, based on the information we have gathered, we are seeing a 31% increase over the same report for last year. At this moment in time, we're estimating in excess of 16 billion in projects that will enter the construction cycle, will start on site and be completed during 2016. So I think for, for the industry as a whole, it is uh, encouraging. And there will be t numerous challenges, as has been outlined here today, across a broad range of areas, but certainly from the activity that we are ex experiencing from, uh, from planning and pre-planning in particular, and then the activity going through, I believe that 2016 and beyond bodes well for the sector. Thank you very much.